Hello everyone, I'm Bruffy1322 and welcome to this little bonus video within the fastest fully upgraded cars series showing all the fastest bikes in GTA Online. So if you haven't seen the previous series showing all the best cars in the game from 140th place all the way to first, click the annotations on the screen and the links down below, but otherwise let's get straight into the fastest bikes. So in 20th place we have the Lifeguard Blazer, technically not a bike but I'll explain that later on. The Lifeguard Blazer can't be, sto can't be upgraded at Los Santos Customs but it can be stored in your garage which is why it gets such a poor time with a 1 minute 34. It's very heavy and it's very slow as well. So in 19th place the Faggio is our lowest placed fully upgradable bike in the entire game with 131.0, that's a very slow lap time but it is second in utility vehicles with that. So in 18th place we have the Bagger, now the Bagger gets a massive jump in lap time over the Faggio with a 1 minute 15.1 so for, you know 16 seconds quicker but compared to the other bikes it's not going to do a lot, it is quite slow in that regard. Because in 17th place we have the Hot Rod Blazer and the Hot Rod Blazer manages a lap time of 1 minute 10.947 so obviously nearly a 5 second difference there. The Hot Rod Blazer is a little bit uh, a little bit heavier than the regular Blazer and that's why it's a little bit slower as you can see here because in 16th place we have the regular Blazer which can be used in motorcycle races even though it's technically an off-road vehicle and that gets a 1 minute 9.769 so that is slightly slower than the Bifter as well so it doesn't quite overhaul the Bifter in the off-roads class. In 15th place we have the Demon, now the Demon is our first sort of cruiser bike and with a 1 minute 8.6 that's not a bad lap time overall really, in, comp you know, in comparison to the other bikes it's not that quick but overall that's not too bad and just ahead of it in 14th place is the Hexa with a 1 minute 8.4 so not that much of a difference there between those two bikes, they are very similar, they are quite nice to drive as well, uh, it, you know, they're just not, that, uh, not on the pace of the top bikes. So in 13th place we have our first sports bike which is the PCJ600. Unfortunately for the PCJ which has kind of always been a staple of the, the, uh, the, the motorbikes in GTA Online, the 1 minute 7.7 .7 that it gets isn't very quick and it just lacks that overall power really. So in 12th place just ahead of it is the Sovereign. Now the Sovereign is quite nice to drive, it's qu pretty quick around the corners as well. It is only a one seater though so you can only get one person on it. But the 1 minute 6 lap times that we're seeing here are very similar to the uh, the Voltic and the Alpha from the cars. So the bikes that you're seeing here, the Sanchez for example here in 11th place and the, the Sovereign that we saw earlier, uh, they are pretty much on the same pace as the Voltic and the Alpha when fully upgraded. So in 10th place we have the Thrust which is basically the the adder of the bikes world really, you know, it's very quick in a straight line, but it just can't get around the corners very well. So just going back to the Sanchez, I just want to point out that the Sanchez can be used in off-road races and it is about three seconds per lap quicker than the Bifter. So, you know, the, the Sanchez is definitely the one to use uh, in off-road races for the ultimate pace. But be aware that with the bikes, and with, this is the same with all the bikes, not just the Sanchez, you have to wheelie with the bikes. You know, If you don't wheelie with them, they aren't going to be anywhere near as quick as what they can be. Uh, so you are always going to get beaten by someone who will wheelie with a bike. Uh, leaning forward does give you a small boost in time, but it's nowhere near as effective as wheelieing with the bike. So you have to get that front wheel up, and if you do, you'll be able to get these sort of really quick lap times as well. So the Sanchez is the best one for off-roads, but of course, you know, if you're on a track that you can't wheelie much on, then the Bifter would be the one to go for in that event, or even the Blazer. So just something to keep in mind there, really. Obviously in ninth place there we had the Innovation which is actually quite quick for one of those cruiser bikes and in 8th place we now have the Vader which doesn't, doesn't have an awful lot of power but it's quite good around the corners uh, and the 1 minute 5 lap times that we're going to be seeing for the next few bikes are very similar to for example the 9F and the Serrano uh, from the, the, top, uh, the top cars so yeah we're, we're pretty quick in terms of lap times here uh, and obviously that's all because of wheeling. So obviously I just want to let you know also that the distinction, distinguishing factor that made me put the blazers in with the bikes is that in my opinion they are closer to bikes than they are cars but also you have to wear a helmet when you're using the blazers and you know for example the lawnmower which isn't really a car either but it, you don't have to wear a helmet with it so I decided to put every vehicle that you have to wear a helmet for in the same video as the bikes and that was the distinguishing factor between me choosing to put the blazers in this video or put them in the uh, in the cars video as well. 
So here we go in seventh place with the Nemesis. The Nemesis isn't too bad, you know, it's reasonably quick. Uh, just lacks a little bit of overall power really. But again, the 1 minute 5.4 lap time from this is the same as the 9F and the Serrano. So uh, that is basically at this point from, from the, the Ruffian onwards, we are now into the top 10 cars in terms of lap time. So with a 1 minute 3.3, we've actually taken quite a big jump to the Ruffian. And the Ruffian does get a really good lap time, you know, with the front wheel up, with wheeling, it's really good around the corners as well. Uh, it, it's quite an all-round well-balanced bike and with a 1 minute 3.3 there are only three cars in the entire game that are quicker than it as you will have known from the uh, from the, the top cars series so we, we are at this point you know up to some reasonably quick lap times that we we've only seen from a very few small amount of cars so far um, so in fifth place we've got the carbon rs now the carbon rs was a bit of a uh, a bit of a surprise but it is quite quick you know when it's fully upgraded with a 1 minute 2.6 it is basically quicker than every single car in the game except one so you know th that's the kind of lap times that we're seeing here um the, the only only the best car in the game is quicker than this bike and quicker than all of the bikes that we've seen here and it's all about the wheeling as you can see there you know getting that front wheel up really just gives you so much more speed and that's what allows you to get these sort of lap times if if we went to wheelie with any of these bikes none of these bikes would be able to get a better lap time than the best car so that's just putting that into perspective so in fourth place we have the double t with a one minute 1 1.0 we are now into lap times that we haven't seen before and we are a good second quicker already than the best car in the game so obviously you know the double t is very well balanced it's very quick in a straight line with the front wheel up it's very nice around the corners it's just a nice bike to drive the double t it doesn't uh, it doesn't have any real flaws just lacks a bit of that overall power and acceleration to get the really top spots but it's a very nice bike regardless and just ahead of it in third place is the hakuchu now the hakuchu is very very quick in a straight line if you get that front wheel up it will absolutely fly and it is definitely the one to use on those long highway races it just lacks a little bit of traction in the corners it's a little bit heavy as well uh, it, it can get very good lap times as you're seeing here a one minute point seven three tenths of a second quicker than the double t but it's more about the straight line speed with the hakuchu as you can see here it just absolutely flies along the straights so yeah it, it the, the more straights that you have and the more chance you can get the wheel, front wheel up with it then the better in second place we have the Akuma. So obviously the Akuma has you know pretty much always been the second best bike in the game. With a 59.6, it is absolutely flying compared to all of the other bikes. You know, the, this is the only the, the first out of two vehicles that we'll see that have broken that one minute barrier. It's over a second quicker than the Hakuchu and it absolutely flies. It's so consistent as well with getting this the kind of lap times that you're seeing. You know, it, it, it is easily one of the quickest vehicles in the entire game. It just has immense acceleration out of the corners. It's a let, let down the tiniest little bit by its uh, top speed and a little bit in, in terms of traction compared to our number one bike. But overall, you know, you, you really can't go wrong with the Akuma. Uh, if you choose this as your race bike, you'll do very well. Ultimately, it doesn't quite get the absolute best lap time that's possible out of bikes. But on, on some tracks it will, on some of sort of more outlier tracks where acceleration is more important. And in general, in a racing situation, it's going to serve you very, very well. So that leaves only one more bike left, and that is the Barty 801. This has always generally shown up to be the best bike in the game, and it's the same here again. With a 59.3, it gets a lap time that's around three tenths of a second quicker than the Akuma. Now that isn't a lot. But I would say that the Barty still has a little bit more to give. Um, the, the problem with the Barty is that it's a lot more difficult to get that lap time down. Ultimately, the, on most tracks, the Barty will give you the best lap time over the Akuma. That's because it has more traction, higher top speed and better braking as well. It's only really acceleration that the Akuma has over it. However, it's a lot more difficult to get that lap time out of it because you do have to be perfect on every single corner with your turning you have to get that front wheel up as much as possible to really take advantage of the acceleration and the top speed um, but overall the Barty will give at the very limit of what a bike is possible the Barty will give slightly better lap times but I would say that you can definitely you could definitely use the Akuma in a racing situation it's just whatever suits you most 
So there you go guys, we've had all of the bikes there, all 20 bikes in the game and well 17 bikes and a few uh, a few of the blazers. Let me know what you think down below, were you, were you surprised or were you sort of expecting these results? Thanks a lot for watching everyone, I really do appreciate all the support that you've shown throughout this series. There will be an analysis video going up very soon and that will include all of the spreadsheet and, and things like that and a lot more information about uh, and talk, a discussion about the series. So keep an eye out for that. Thanks a lot for watching everyone, I really do appreciate it. Be sure to like, subscribe, all that good stuff and I'll see you next time.